Many of you guys know that the PlayStation 5 essentially acts as its own built-in capture card for recording and live streaming gameplay, but it comes with its limitations, such as not being able to have graphic overlays, alerts, playing and including Spotify, and even just having the basic ability to stream to Facebook. That's why I'm showing you guys today how you can stream your PS5 gameplay to Streamlabs desktop or OBS without a capture card. What you'll need to run this setup is a Windows or Mac computer, a good USB microphone for your live streaming commentary, also get a web camera if you wanna have that face cam on top of your gameplay. I know a lot of you guys out there might have the PlayStation 5 camera, but keep in mind that'll only work when you're live streaming directly off the PS5 console. That camera is not meant to work on Windows and Mac computers. You guys are also gonna wanna make sure that you download Streamlabs desktop or OBS, this tutorial will work for that as well. And then you're also gonna need to get the remote play application from PlayStation. Go ahead and install these applications like you would any other piece of software on your computer. They're totally safe to use. Before we boot up a remote play session, you're gonna wanna make sure that your PlayStation is set as your primary console for offline gaming and sharing. And then you also wanna make sure that you have remote play enabled on your PS5 console. Now this part is very important. You're gonna need to decide whether or not you wanna use your PS5 controller directly with the console or paired with your computer. If you decide to go the route of pairing the PS5 controller with your computer, then you can sign into Remote Play using your primary PSN account. As long as your PlayStation and computer are on the same network connection, they'll have an easy time finding each other to establish the Remote Play session. Now you can connect your PS5 controller via the USB-C to USB-A cable directly to the computer, or you can do it via Bluetooth. All you would need to do is press the home button and the create button at the same time for about three seconds until you see a flashing light on the front of the controller and then just go into your computer settings go to bluetooth and select the dualsense controller and you're good to go the only issue i have with running this setup is that there's just a smidge bit of latency using the remote play session on the computer it's nothing major but you can feel it a great benefit to this setup though is that you can use one microphone for your commentary in streamlabs as well as through the remote play session for all your parties and game chats, all that good stuff. Just make sure in your audio settings on your computer, you have your input device set to your microphone that you have plugged into your computer. And then in remote play, just go ahead, unmute yourself, and you'll be able to talk to your party members in your game chat. Now, if you wanna pair your PS5 controller directly with the console while still being able to use Streamlabs without the capture card, then you're gonna need to create a second PSN account. You'll need to add that second PSN account as a user to your PS5 and then make sure remote play is enabled and offline sharing primary console. Those settings are set that we just covered. And from there, you can go to the remote play application on your computer, sign in with that secondary PSN account, select the PS5 option and then your computer and your PlayStation will find each other and you'll be up and running on that second account. Now what you need to do is take your PS5 controller and just press the home button, can try to connect to your console like you would if you were normally playing, and then just go ahead and select your primary PSN account that's connected with your PlayStation console. And now from there, you can hold the PlayStation home button and that'll take you to your home screen, but you will notice something right off the bat and that's the remote play connected dialogue right at the top. That's super annoying, we don't want that. So to get rid of that, you're gonna wanna go to your settings and then you're gonna wanna go to system, scroll down to language, console language, and then just set it to a different language. It'll close out any apps that you have active at the moment, so keep that in mind. But once you do that, you'll see that that dialog box at the top will be gone. Now the caveat to this method is if you want your party chat or your game chat to be able to hear you, you will need a separate USB microphone to plug into your PlayStation. If you're trying to use the controller mic or headset with the microphone connected to it, that'll force the chat audio to stop coming through the remote play session to be picked up on your computer. Now we can go ahead and launch Streamlabs desktop. If you have a fresh install, it'll probably ask you to log in with your YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch account. So go ahead and do that and get to the screen that you see me have right here. And go ahead and create a scene. I've created one already called PlayStation Remote Play Gameplay. And from here, I can go ahead and add a source by pressing the plus button. And I'm gonna wanna look for the window capture source. There we go. Select add source. You can name it whatever you'd like. We're gonna add that source. 
And then for the window drop down, we're gonna wanna select the remote play session, which is right here, remoteplay.exe. We select that and you'll probably see it's a black screen. Of course, we don't want a black screen. We never, ever want a black screen. So to fix this, go ahead and select the drop down for capture method and select Windows 10, and you'll have your remote play session pop up. You can choose to have the cursor in there or not. I won't, uh, just to make it a little cleaner of a look, select done. And then from here, I'm going to just draw out the corners here actually a little bit, and then just keep pulling it, pulling it, pulling it. There we go. That is looking pretty good, guys. If for some reason you're still having some issues, you're gonna wanna make sure that the remote play window is not minimized. If you still have a black screen, then go ahead and restart Streamlabs desktop and even possibly restart your entire computer. That can fix many issues that can arise. On the Mac side, if things aren't working, make sure you go into your security and privacy settings and allow the remote play session to be recorded. With our gameplay picture all set up, we wanna make sure we address the audio component as that is separate from the video. Let's go back to our sources, select the plus button, and from here we'll scroll down just a smidge and select the audio output capture. This will allow our desktop audio to be captured, which includes the remote play audio. And as you can see, that game audio is coming through right within the desktop audio source. If you're following along using OBS version 28, then you can actually add an application audio capture source. Select the remote play session and that will record your audio. If for some reason it's not coming through right away, just restart OBS and launch it back up and it should work. For my macOS users, this won't be as straightforward as what I just showed you here. You're gonna need to download a digital audio device such as Black Hole. My favorite is probably Ground Control Caster or Loopback as you can specify the audio sources that you can connect into OBS. So definitely check those out if you're having audio issues on Mac. Now we can go back to Streamlabs desktop and spruce this up a little bit. One thing you wanna add is the commentary microphone audio. As you can see, I already have one added here for my Elgato Wave, but if you don't have one here, just go over to the settings icon on the left-hand side, go to the audio tab, and then for one of your mic auxiliary devices, go ahead and select that USB microphone that you plugged into your computer. After you do that, select done, and then you will have your microphone audio coming through for your stream. Let's go ahead and add another source, and this time it's gonna be a video capture device. We're gonna add the source. This is gonna be my face cam. My computer web camera is selected here as default, but if I plugged in some additional web cameras, I can just go ahead and select that drop down and choose whichever web camera that I plugged into the computer. All right, we're gonna close. I can just resize this any way that I like. Some other things that we're gonna wanna add is the alert box. So that way we can get those alerts that we love from donators, people who are subscribed to the channel, all that good stuff. So let's make sure we put that in. This is where we can actually configure what those alerts will look like. So if you guys can go and play around with this, add in different giffies and, and effects that you might wanna have. I'll just leave those default for this video today. If we go back to our sources, we can scroll down a little bit here and then add a chat box. So that way we get all those people who chat on stream It'll come through. I'll leave this one as well up to you guys for how you wanna customize this. If you have overlay packs, you can add those in the Streamlabs desktop as well. I have some from Own TV that we can throw in here. And now I'm gonna select my face cam box and actually just blow this up a little bit so that it can fit my, my web camera that I have here. We're gonna select the Option key or the Alt key and I'm just gonna pull these sides on in. Not too bad. Before you guys go live, you should do an internet speed test to see where you should be setting your bit rate for outputting to Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook. So you can just go on Google, type in speed test, run the speed test, see what your numbers are. Now we can go back to Streamlabs desktop. On the left-hand side, let's go to settings. Then let's go to output. And then for me, I'm in the advanced mode here. I'm using the AMD encoder, which is my dedicated graphics card on this particular computer. Some of you guys may just have the software encoder, which is that's the CPU. I'm gonna imagine that's the case for probably a lot of you guys watching this video. So we can go ahead and select the software encoder. Rate control, we'll continue to do CBR, which stands for constant bit rate. For the bit rate itself, 
This is where it depends on how fast your internet speed was, particularly your upload speed. Let's say your upload speed is around 10 megabits per second. You can comfortably set your bitrate anywhere between 5,000 and 6,000 max for a 1080p stream. Now, for those of you guys that just don't have good internet speed, like let's say it's at three to five megabits per second, then you'll wanna set your bitrate between 2,000 and 3,000, which won't give you the greatest quality, but it'll at least alleviate the lagging and stream stoppage due to your internet. We don't need to use a custom buffer size. Keyframe, we can put that to two. And then below that, you're gonna see CP usage preset. Right now, by default, it's set to very fast. This is honestly a good preset to keep it at if your computer can handle it. If you see it's handling this just fine, then you can make it even slower. That'll give you better quality for your stream because your CPU is taking longer to encode the video. On the flip side of that, of course, if your computer's having trouble keeping up with the processing or you're experiencing encoding overload, then you need to go to super fast or ultra fast and also lowering your bit rate until you have the issue resolved. There's no perfect settings guide that'll apply to every computer out there exactly. So you'll need to play around with this a little bit. Other than those settings, you can select done. And from here, just go ahead and select go live and have fun streaming.